couple days ago, I saw this co really cool demo on Twitter. And basically what this guy did was he created a GPT-3 custom function in Google Sheets. And Google Sheets lets you cust create custom functions that can call out to the network. So in this case, it was a very simple call to the OpenAI GPT-3 API. And he has a couple of really cool demos that he created with it. For example, here he's generating uh, a thank you card for wedding guests based on a bunch of different things uh, he wants to mention in that thank you card. You can go check out uh, this demo in the description below, but I didn't see a public version of this released where I could run it myself, so I figured I would just build it. Um, so here are a couple demos with my version of this custom function. Uh, humans to do the categorization combined with some uh, additional help, um, but overall it was just kind of labor intensive and a GPT-3 is really good at classification. So let's see how that works here. I have a bunch of items that I've copied over from Zara. We just have the names of the items. So what you want to do is I have this custom function that I created called AI. So all you do is hit equals, say AI, and then you can specify the prompt. Um, so a prompt here is going to be something like the categories uh, are, let's say shoes, dresses, outerwear, I see some shirts, skirts. Um, yeah, that seems, oh, I guess pants. So that seems like a good set of things. Uh, what category is, and the way you do a string concatenation in sheets is you use an ampersand, so you hit ampersand. What category is the selected cell in, um, reply with just the cat category. I like adding this so we get a clean response that's uh, simple. And let's see if it worked. Amazing, so now let's see if it works for everything else. So drag it down and see that. amazing. So we got dresses, looks mostly right, and knows that moccasins are shoes. I guess this one was wrong, but other than that, I think everything else looks right. The sweater should be out of wear. I'm not sure why it's classifying it as shirts. Um, so it does a pretty good, decent job, and then you can have a human verify the actual results. So this is already great. Um, one thing I was trying to do is, you know, let's say we're exporting this, and I want these things to all be capitalized. And uh, the first time I did this, I looked around uh, for uh, like a capitalized function in Excel. Um, let's say you have thousands of these items, it can be pretty annoying to like go fix all of them. But then I realized that GPT-3 uh, is actually getting pretty close in some ways to a general intelligence. So you can actually just ask the AI for to do the capitalization for you. So let's say we wanted to capitalize this word um, and do the same thing the ampersand, and let's see. It's definitely gonna work on the shoes, but let's see what it looks like for everything else. And voila, there you have a very nicely cleaned uh, data, a data set. Um, yeah, this is super cool. I mean, it's very simple, but um, the fact that you can just ask for it and you don't need to remember that uh, there's a function named something, you can just be like, capitalize this word. That is so, so cool. So let's call this standardized category. So GPT-3 is good at classification, as we've seen. It can also do some really powerful uh, creative writing or generation of text. So let's say we want to write some like Facebook ad copy, and let's try a different prompt for that. So here we're going to say, write a creative ad for the following product to run on Facebook aimed at Gen Z. So this will hopefully result in some fun things. So we just give it the name. And uh, the second parameter here is temperature. And I kind of think of temperature as creativity, one being super creative and zero being something you'd use for a classification task, which, um, 
some, where you want it to be exact and give you precisely the right answer. Cool. Let's uh, let's wrap this and see what it looks like. Looking for something unique and stylish? Check out our heel cowboy boots. They're perfect for making a statement and adding a touch of edge to any outfit. That's pretty great. Um, let's see how it works for everything else. Here's another example. So I do a lot of my budgeting in Google Sheets. Um, and here what I have is I exported from my city card uh, a CSV of uh, some recent transactions. And this is another categorization or classification task that I want to do. Um, and I created a nifty little tool um, on top of the AI function. And this is uh, specifically a categorized function so you don't need to write like a long prompt uh, like we did last time. So first, um, let's define the categories that we have. Uh, so looking at this, you know, uh, we have food, transportation, um, clothing, groceries. Uh, I think there's some uh, sports. Um, and then we can say others. And what we do is go here and create a category column, categorize, and then you choose these and just have to use the credit card line item as the input. So let's see how it works on this. Great. So El Bambino is a restaurant and it correctly guessed it as, as food. I'm not really sure how it even did that, but uh, it works. So let's fix this range for the categories and then let's drag it down for the rest of the cells see how it does cool so we've got city bike and uber as transportation all these amazon things are just classified as other um it looks pretty decent um we got one of these seamless orders as other when it really should be food um so one thing we could do is we could extend this to Google this line item and use feed the context from Google. So maybe use the description or the title of the first search result. And I think, I think the AI will be able to get 95 to maybe 99% of these categories exactly right, uh, assuming there are some Google search results for, for what you search for. Um, but one cool thing that I specifically added was I added a bunch of uh, a way to like add rules. So you could say something like anything that contains um, seamless or uh, seamless is categorized as food. Cool. So let's um, let's also have another rule that anything that contains Amazon is categorized as groceries, since that's what I'm gonna bucket them as. And now we can pass in a third parameter here, which is a range of rules. So it's not gonna make much of a difference on the first one, um, but let's see how it works once we fix it and drag it down for the rest of the cells. Cool, so looks like it's fixed the seamless one that was not categorized as food since we explicitly told it to do so. And then all the Amazon ones are groceries. So it is, it is just really powerful and there's not really much code. So let's look at how you can get this working on your own Google Sheets now. Now first you need to log in uh, to OpenAI, create an account if you don't have one, and then go to the top right, um, in the dropdown, pick View API Keys. And if you don't have a key already, you'll hit Create New Key, and then that will generate an API key for you. So you have that copied. And now let's go create a new sheet that we have here and go to Extensions, go to App Scripts. So let's paste in uh, the secret key we're gonna use and let's copy Copy the code from the gist that I will be linking um, down below. 
and let's put in the secret key with win codes here. So once that's done, you're all good. Save it and hit run. So now it's gonna prompt you for permissions. And basically Google is asking you to give permissions uh, to run the code that you just pasted in uh, on your own um, account. And there's nothing sketchy about the code. You can look at the code. So there's no calls being made. Um, so you go into advance and then you hit allow. And once you do that and authorization is successful, you should be all good to go. So now if you go back to the sheet, we see that we have this AI custom function. So let's say, write me a short story about Little Red Robin. I have no idea what that is, but let's give it a shot. Red Robin was a little bird who loved to sing. She would sing all day long. And there you have it. Pretty simple, straightforward way to get this working in your own sheets. If you're on a free trial, you might get raid limited uh, by OpenAI. You can pay for it, and um, that should give you much higher rate limits 